Welcome everybody today to my session, Technology to Break Down Barriers in the Special Needs and Remedial Classroom. And I'm so thankful that you chose to join my session today because no matter what type of teacher you are, um, despite if you're a special needs teacher or um, a main ed teacher that happens to have a child in your class with a specific or a special need, I know that you're going to get something out of today's session and I'm hoping that you're going to walk away with some valuable insight and just a refreshed vision for your children, for your class, for your students um, and I'm hoping that this session inspires you to keep going because inclusive education isn't easy I'm not gonna lie to you um, but it is worth it and it is the future of education in particular in South Africa um, and I'm excited to be a part of these conversations and these discussions when it comes to inclusive education because it's such a powerful um, topic and such a powerful topic because it really does change the lives of your students in your class. So thank you for joining me today. My name is Chelsea Williamson and I am the Inclusion and Accessibility Specialist at iSchool Africa and Think Ahead. And I'm one of those people that really get to wake up every single day and say I love what I do because I really do love what I do. Um, so ultimately my role at iSchool Africa is we take technology into special needs schools across the country and we give them the technology and then we go in with the teachers, the therapists and the students and support them on how to use that technology because what we've seen a big trend worldwide is, is there are sponsors that come and give the technology but without the adequate training on how to use the technology, I'm sure those of you that are in the edtech field, you would have seen how it can fail. Um, so we are incredibly passionate about ensuring that not only do we give you the technology, but we give you the right resources and the right training to facilitate um, your edtech in a special needs environment. And that is my job. I love what I do. Um, and I'm very, very fortunate to see firsthand how technology can impact the lives of our students, especially, especially in special special ed and remedial classrooms in South Africa. So maybe you've joined today's session and you're just curious about, you know, you've seen this buzzword accessibility or another buzzword inclusion going around and you're just a little bit curious. Welcome today if that's what you're after. If you're a special needs or a special ed specific teacher at a special needs school, awesome. I'm excited to have you on board. Or maybe you're a main ed teacher and you have one or two children with specific needs, ADHD, autism, any types of disability in your classroom and you're wanting to find ways to and best, better support them. Well then, welcome today. Welcome to everybody. I'm really glad that, that you joined me today. Um, for those of you that know, children with disabilities worldwide and in particular in South Africa are probably the most marginalized community. Um, we are finding that children with disabilities are probably the most underrepresented and probably the most um, marginalized and excluded group in society because they face such high forms of discrimination because they haven't been integrated into society there's no real disability inclusion in South Africa at the moment and like I said it is the future there are policies that are in the process of being made so inclusion is disability inclusion is the next step in education in South Africa so just you will hear me speaking a lot about accessibility and a lot about the word inclusion and I believe it's very important to understand what these terms are and um, so that you can really understand what it is that I'm talking about and to help you understand accessibility I've got a very short video that I show at most of my presentations and it's just going to highlight some of Apple's accessibility features and I know maybe you you don't have an iPad or a MacBook or you don't work with Apple devices a lot of these accessibility features not all of them are available on other platforms Android based devices and Chromebooks um, there are external apps that you can download and use on your other devices as well but I'm going to show you this video just to give you an overview of some of the accessibility features that you could use in your classroom on your devices People think that having a disability is a barrier. But that's not the way I see it. You can catch up with friends. 
Ready? You can capture a moment with your family. One face, small face, focus lock. And you can start the day bright and early. You can take a trip to somewhere new. Three miles to the summit. You can concentrate on every word of a story. A bird began to sing. Jack opened his eyes. You can take the long way home. Edit a film like this one. When technology is designed for everyone, it lets anyone do what they love, including me. Awesome. I love that video and Personally, every time I watch it, I just get motivated to keep doing what I'm doing because there are constant developments and just as much as that video highlights some of the accessibility features that are available for you to use, it doesn't highlight all of them. In fact, there are so many updates that happen on a regular basis, constantly adding new accessibility features, new accessibility support. In fact, Zoom as well has just updated their accessibility features to cater for the deaf community. And you're finding um, all these platforms are finding new ways to be more accessible. Twitter recently had an update, Facebook also recently had an update, um, and all these little platforms, they're starting to see how accessibility is becoming so vital, especially with everything moving online. Um, it's so important that the resources that we're putting out are accessible to everyone. Um, and I love that accessibility is constantly being developed and growing and being prioritized in more and more um, of these platforms, apps and devices. Um, and I, I love always seeing the new innovations and new ways to create accessibility, to create accessible environments. And I know in particular for today's session, how to create accessible classrooms. Um, so just a little bit of statistics in case you didn't know. UNICEF estimates that there are 93 million children with disabilities worldwide and they do say um, just to support this that that is just an estimate because a huge portion of disabled children are in poor, um, underdeveloped and under-resourced areas and often aren't included in the statistics. And we find that, especially in South Africa, children with disabilities are marginalized um, on a, a whole nother level because I think our culture, we haven't really grasped disabilities. We are dealing with inclusion on another level. When you look at South Africa, the progress we've made with inclusion, um, in terms of racial inclusion, in terms of gender inclusion, we've had so much development in the field of inclusion that now we're only starting to get to disability inclusion, whereas other countries overseas, for example, America's first um, disability policy was introduced in the 70s, South Africa was only first introduced in the 90s. So we're very far behind in terms of policies and structures and getting everything in place. Um, and that's why the development in South Africa, there's so much more marginalization with, when it comes to disabled children. Also, we have a very interesting um, background when it comes to cultural diversity and in a lot of cultures in South Africa disabilities are shunned upon in fact a lot of families can take a disability in their family as a family curse so these children are marginalized beyond marginalized um, so even when we look at these statistics 93 million children worldwide that's an estimate um, imagine how much more if we could really get to grasp how many children with disabilities but even just that statistic if you just put that statistic in your mind that is a, a huge portion of the students and the children that we are teaching. Another statistic says one in every five child has a learning disability. That means that no matter where you're teaching, you are guaranteed to have at least 
two, maybe two children in your classroom that have some sort of a learning disability. So there's no getting away from this. There's no denying inclusion, there's no denying accessibility, and there's no denying the need for it. We've seen now with the pandemic, COVID-19, how marginalization is getting even worse because children with disabilities are staying at home with their their parents and the parents are used to sending their children away to school and not having to deal with the disability and now the disability is in their face and they're not equipped they're not they don't know how to deal with these disabilities and that's why we've seen a massive increase in the rise of abuse cases when it comes to children with disabilities in this country because parents don't know how to cope with their children and again you might be thinking how can you say a parent doesn't know how to cope with their child Yes, it's a sad reality, but it's, it's a sad truth. One statistic that was released by Gallaudet University, in fact, this is a, a statistic that is used throughout the deaf community, is 90% of parents that have a deaf child don't know sign language. That's worldwide. That's not just South Africa focused. 90% um, of parents who have a deaf child can't communicate with their child because they haven't taken that step to learn their child's language. And there's a quote you'll hear, um, it says, a deaf child will never learn to hear, but a hearing parent can learn how to sign. A hearing teacher can learn how to sign. A hearing individual, a hearing co-worker, a hearing employee can learn how to sign. Um, and it's, it's, it's so scary when I read these statistics, but this furthermore just drives that, that point. Parents don't know how to cope with their children that have a disability, whether it's deafness, whether it's blindness, autism, Asperger's, ADHD, dyspraxia, all these spectrums of disabilities, parents aren't equipped on how to deal with um, their child. Sad reality, but it's a sad truth. So why am I telling you all of this? To really open up your eyes and to allow you to grasp the reality of what's going on in South Africa. So when we think of an inclusive class, we might think of racial inclusion, gender inclusion, and now today we're going to be focusing on disability inclusion. And I'm going to be focusing on five quick points on how EdTech can support the special needs class. But before I get into how it can support it, I also just want to let you know that as amazing as this drive for inclusion is, it's important to know that it's not going to be smooth sailing. Change is difficult, full stop. I've never met one person in my life who's come up to me and gone, I love change, I want to do change, I want to change my whole world. No matter what, people don't like change. But in some cases, change can bring about unbelievable results. If we look at all these different types of inclusion that I'm talking about, if we look at racial inclusion, it, we don't have to look that far back to see in our history how racial segregation was our reality. And in a couple of years, this has changed. And now, yes, there's still far more change that needs to happen in this area, but we've taken steps towards change. And we look at gender inclusion, same thing. Women weren't allowed to vote. Women weren't allowed to um, do the same things as men. They had to be at home in the kitchen. Well, you know what? I don't do that. My husband is amazing and he's very supportive of it um, and of my career, but that's not the case for women anymore. Women are more included today now, more than they were previously. Now again, yes, there's still more strides that need to be made in this area, but it's not to say that change hasn't started happening. This change needs to happen for disability inclusion. It's the next step in terms of inclusion worldwide and even more so in South Africa. Um, education, inclusion in education, it is the next step and the only way, in my opinion, to successfully include disabled and non-disabled children in the same classroom is through the use of technology. And it is the most powerful tool when it comes to inclusion. However, there are going to be barriers. Barriers like negative opinions and stereotypes. Bias, we know about bias and it will be there because there are, whether it's generational bias or personal bias, there will be 
opinions and stereotypes. There will be lack of physical access. Your school might need to relook at are there enough ramps? Are there um, the right equipment? Is there a right equipment? Is If there's a fire drill, is there the right systems in place for children with different disabilities? Um, all these different types of physical access to the school for an inclusive environment, it's going to need to be looked at. Focus on students' weaknesses instead of strengths. It's going to be a natural inclination to go, oh, you have this, you can't do this. But I want to challenge you to change your thinking. Oh, you think differently or you do things differently. Let me play to your strengths instead of your weaknesses. It's going to be a natural process, but it's going to be constantly learning and relearning and unlearning. Uh, lack of focus on unique needs, of course that's going to happen. Lack of parent and community support, I've already touched on that. Lack of resources and budgets, we know that that is an issue as it stands in every single classroom. Now adding to inclusion, it's going to be lack of budget, lack of resource, it's the same story. Um, and students will also struggle with self-identity, struggle with confidence, it might affect their results, it might um, affect um, low motivation, poor learning outcomes, all those things. But again, it'll be a process and it will be a process of good change. Um, however, above all, what you're going to need is to focus on assistive technology and ed tech for assistive technology. So like I said, I'm going to touch on those five points. And the first point that I'm going to be touching on is ed tech promotes equity. Now I'm going to pop up a picture. And as you can see, this picture is on the screen and it says, and it's, it's, it's just showing you the difference between equality and equity. A lot of people will say ed tech promotes equality and it's not the case. Ed tech promotes equity because you're giving the student the same device you're going to give the main ed students and the special ed students the same device. But how they set that device up to their own personal needs, their own personal likes and dislikes is unique to them. So they are on the same playing field using the same technology. There's no differentiation. There's no, you can't do this. I mean, I, I, I was working with this one blind student and they were saying to me, before they had an iPad, they had to carry around a backpack full of books in Braille um, and it killed their back. And now all their books are on their iPad and they just carry around one device that using voiceover and screen readers um, and other accessibility features, they're able to do everything that the main ed students did and, that, and another low vision student who is in a main ed um, school. He, his teacher used to print him out all the, the books and, and um, worksheets on this massive paper and he said it was so embarrassing because they'd sit down in class and the teacher would be like, oh, 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 you, oh, you know what, oh, I, I printed your worksheets for you specially and then I put these massive sheets of paper. It was so mortifying for him. But now he uses magnifier on his iPad and doesn't need that printed on extra large sheets um, you know, sitting at the front of the class, isolated, marginalized. He looks the same because you're using an iPad, I'm using an iPad, but we use our iPads differently and my iPad gives me an equal playing field. So EdTech promotes equity. The second point is EdTech makes assistive tools more available. Now I've touched briefly on it with some of the stories that I've shared with you, but most schools are moving towards a one-to-one -one computing system, whether it's one-to-one -one iPad or one-to-one -one, um, Android device or however, whatever devices you're using in your um, school, 100% that's okay. Um, but one-to-one -one computing is a huge movement because we're seeing the benefits of technology and ed tech in the classroom. However, when we look at these devices that we're using, there are unbelievable assistive tools built in. What, what I've seen, which is, it's crazy, is people will go, oh, I, I wish I, I bought this device and this device reads books aloud to me. But your iPad can do that. Oh, I, I needed to buy uh, an ACC device and augmented uh, an ACC device that helps with communication. 
but your iPad can do that. Oh, I needed to buy a screen reader to help me read things without being able to physically see them, but your iPad can do it. And the list goes on and on. There are so many accessible features, whether they're built into your device, such as speak screen, speak, um, speak selection, voiceover, guided access, sound recognition, you can connect your hearing aids to the device and use live listen. There are so many accessibility features that are available on your devices and then you power that with the accessibility apps uh, like Tap Tap C. I, I mean honestly the list just goes on and these devices make the classroom accessible, make teaching and make learning accessible using the built-in accessibility features. Point three is EdTech breaks down physical barriers. Um, and I, I love this because it really is unbelievable. A lot of us are teaching in our classrooms and we have our interactive displays in the front of our class, be it a smart board or a projector or however you want to use it. Students that have physical disabilities, for them to get up and use that interactive display is another barrier. However, when you connect your device to your interactive display, the child connects, the student connects their, their device to the interactive display. They can engage, communicate and interact without ever having to leave their seat. Using interactive games like Kahoot or using collaborative tools like your Google Docs or um, collaboration in pages or keynotes or however you want to use it the child can interact engage without ever having to leave their seat it's a game changer point four is communication edtech delivers new ways to communicate um, like I spoke about using augmented ACC augmented and alternative communication devices or apps um, they can download these ACC strategies, whether it's pictures or photos, they can create their own ones using apps like ChoiceWorks or ChoiceBoards, or they can download the pre-made ACC apps like ProLoco to go And then they can communicate without ever having to, if they're non-verbal, without ever having to physically speak. But communication is now effective and available for the student by using the EdTech communication strategies that are in their devices. They can use text-to-speech tools or speech-to-text tools that will just allow daily life to be accessible to them on a whole new level. And then when we use things like our smart pens, whether it's an Apple pen or um, other styluses, it brings it, again, that whole tactile element into the EdTech classroom as well. And the last point is apps, apps, and more apps. You will catch me saying this all the time, there is an app for that. I'm yet for somebody to email me in with a problem and I've not been able to suggest an app for that because there is an app for that. Whatever you're struggling with in your classroom, there is an app for that. Whatever you need to make your classroom more inclusive, there is an app for that. I've mentioned so many apps during this session and if you need more, please feel free to contact me and I'm more than happy to share whatever resources I have. Um, during this period, I've made um, app resources depending on the different types of disabilities that I've interacted with and I'm happy, I'm happy to share my resources with you. And those are my five points, my five top points on how EdTech can create inclusive classrooms and break down barriers for your special needs and remedial classroom. Now before I end off today's session, I really want to give everybody the opportunity. We've got our iPad Accessibility Summit coming up on the 15th of October. And I would love it if you would join us for our summit. It's 250 Rand per person. There will be a South African Sign Language interpreter. And we have an unbelievable lineup of international speakers presenting at our summit, including Sarah Herlinger, who is the Global Director um, Global Accessibility Policies and Initiatives Director for Apple and we've got Dave Mara as well who's the Senior Systems Engineer and an Apple Accessibility Specialist speaking at our event as well as well as a whole host of Apple Distinguished Educators who are going to be sharing their top tips on how to use their classroom in their, their iPad in their accessible classroom so it's really not going to be one to miss. 
And those are my top tips, my top tools to use technology to break down barriers in your special needs and remedial classroom. My email address is on the screen. Please feel free to email me any questions or concerns that you might have or if you'd like to know more information on how you can create an accessible and inclusive classroom, um, whether it's what's your next step or how do you go a little bit deeper, I'm more than happy to help in any way that I can. So thank you so much for taking the time out to join my session. I hope that you, you were inspired and I hope that you're ready to take the next step um, into the future of education, into the future of edtech, and that is inclusive education. I hope you have a great day further and enjoy the rest of your sessions. Thank you.